for a person like me who's been in the events for the last uh, 12 years, if I have to open my events company, I would uh, be in the service industry, then in the uh, execution industry. What I mean by that is uh, the service industry is more beneficial, more profitable than opening an events company itself. Now, the place where I'm working right now is, uh, uh, is, a, is a semi-government company. It's called Blink Experience. We've got so much of uh, revenue. Most of the revenue comes from Saudi Arabia. Our 90% of the revenue comes from Saudi Arabia. Uh, but we started initially, like the company which I'm working for, we started initially in uh, Dubai itself. So the main headquarters is based in Dubai. So they've gained their name and reputation and uh, uh, throughout the years and the trust in the clients. So that is one of the reasons they have repeat, repeated events coming up. If I were to open an events company or an events agency tomorrow, let's say, I would need to first struggle the first six months or seven months to build up my client relationship, you know? Mm. And uh, that would be one tricky uh, hell of a part to be honest uh, but if you're someone as they call in Arabic Vasta you have uh, built your contacts or things like this so it'll be easy for you to kickstart so coming down to the second point which is now this was the event agency part opening an event agency why I would not open an event agency then coming down to the second part which is the service industry now in events if you've noticed there are many suppliers so there's a, there are specific suppliers. For example, there are generator suppliers to provide power in the event, uh, you know, portable power uh, generators. There are uh, suppliers who provide, uh, let's say, cabins for your offices, uh, portable cabins. Now, these people benefit a lot because what, have, what they have done is they have purchased one time their items, their uh, goods, uh, you know, one time an investment. Like, let's say, so if I have to, if I was someone to uh, be in events still, I would not open an events agency, but I would be in the uh, service industry, which is like my personal favorite would be uh, opening a company of tower lights. Tower you know? lights. What is that exactly? So tower lights is something um, when you have an event built and when you are in uh, a very... Uh, deserted island or, or a place where there's no light. So this is where the tower light comes in handy. So the tower light is something generated. It has a small generator and it has a tower uh, which can be, you know, looped on like a volleyball uh, stem. You keep rolling the, uh, you know, the pole and the light extends towards up. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is powered by a small generator which is built in one piece altogether. So it is supplied by a supplier and you put, um, let's say, uh, uh, 50 liters of petrol in it. It can run 24 hours for, I mean, it can run continuously for five days in one gallon. So let's say I want light in some area. I want the area to be lit. So this can have a radius, I mean, sorry, a diameter of 50 meters. So it can lit up that eat. Uh, it can lit, lit up that area. So, um, so, so, so for one tower light, they would charge me. The supplier would charge me at least about four hundred fifty per day. So imagine if I took twenty tower lights from the supplier, you know. So it's already big money. Mm -hmm. So, the service industry and the rental business in events is more profitable then the event agency itself yeah because, because it's, it's kind of consistent right yeah it's, it's consistent, consistent money yeah because i have one event agency but the supplier the service industry and the rental business have its contracts all over the place so if i'm not renting it from him he would not go in loss but there are millions other who would rent it from him the cabins the power the tower lights generators um uh, let's say uh, it could be also like furniture rental company for events, which, you know, let's suppose you're doing a gala dinner for a very VVIP uh, person uh, or, or, or a concert. So you need VIP furnitures. So you rent furnitures for a day or two and he or she is benefiting from it. Whereas I, 
who's doing the kala chinar i'm just taking a small commission margin uh you know uh, uh, from that complete event from the client that's it so who was more profitable here the supplier who provided the furniture obviously not the person uh, who gained a little bit of amount amount and For also example, also you you were the one who kind of you know like uh, worked of everything and worked tired yeah. worked yeah. how many hours do you usually work for this in so a for, week for example it depends now we are on kind of off season so in in year uh two or three months is a little bit off season so during that time we uh, focus on pitch we mm. focus on pitches so uh we pitch for events so i you know we we work from the conceptualization to reading the complete rfp understanding the client's uh, move RFP. Uh, rfp rfp is request for proposal mm. request for mm. yeah so so we so we we um we get that from the client we read that completely and we understand the concept uh what does the client want what's his budget what are they expecting what kind of technology are they expecting so based on that we work on a proposal we work on a presentation uh and then we work on a budget specially so we get it approved and then we submit it for uh, the client to uh, look at it and uh, if we win the pitch and that's where the operations part starts the execution part starts so there's a lot of work going on behind the scene you know from start till the end what does a service industry do let's say i work all this i calculate my uh, numbers of how many things i need of what i need for example there is an event happening outdoors and i need fencing mm -hmm. i need to fence that area so there are fencing suppliers uh, you know like police barriers um a uh, high fence low fence rope and poles you know for vip events or something like this so we plan everything on the last two days before the opening of the event we just call the supplier i need 100 meters of running fence what does he do he packs all from his warehouse puts it in truck and comes to the event and just lays down and just waits for the event to finish and so you un i mean you understand what i'm trying to say who is the one who has worked hard so Absolutely the event you. manager role uh is hard but it's always fun because the the perks are that you get to see every event for free for example i've done the formula 1 of saudi arabia the first season and the second season so i was uh, uh you know uh i mean uh faithful enough to go and see the f1 live uh it was my dream come true you know i've always seen when i was a child in the tv so uh, so yeah so these are the perks and everything uh but one thing for sure for an event manager is that the event manager has its salary going on it's it's got its permanent job so it's an ongoing job whereas the supplier if there's off season there is no rent hmm. so uh, but they cover up their cost during the six months or eight months and the rest three months if they don't get business they're still benefiting or they're still uh building their uh, platform or you know increasing their materials or uh purchasing the or you know revising their inventories so yeah i mean this is what i can say would be an honest opinion from my side actually um i wanted to ask you a question i i myself um i do have a brand right and i always want to know where are the brand where are the events are because I'm searching in Google, I'm searching in Instagram, I'm searching even, I began even searching in TikTok, which I hate myself for, and I, I'm searching everywhere, and I can't even find the place to see where the events are. Where exactly do events, you know, uh, events, you know, events like you, um, the professional ones exactly, where do they advertise themselves at? Because I can't find them. Uh I'll, I'll make it easier for you so basically within the events industry there are different kinds of events uh, genre for example there are cultural events there is opening and closing ceremonies there is uh, uh, corporate events uh, the corporate events are the ones where they book a hall like gala dinner type and uh, lunch ceremony you know gala dinner what, like, gala dinner what i mean it sounds fancy but what is it exactly so basically a gala dinner is something um 
for example, you book a hall in uh, Hilton, let's say, or uh, you book a hall in Armani, Burj Khalifa Armani, a big hall, which can accommodate two to three thousand people. So you you so you do a dinner setup for them. So basically, what a gala dinner means is that uh, mostly it's used for corporate events. So if you have a launch ceremony for let's say Mercedes, which I've done. So I launched the Mercedes uh, uh, G55 uh, back in uh, back five years before. So we booked the Armani Hall, and we did the launch of the uh, one of the Mercedes cars G55. So we did the complete setup for it, how the launch will happen, how the car will enter the stage, and in front of the stage is the setup, which is the seating of round table seating of 2,000 packs. So this is called something like gala dinner but this is definitely so an is, exclusive one right this is like yeah, an exclusive, exclusive very exclusive one so no one knows about it this is a very confidential client they say that no don't tell anything so we get this request from our client team who hunts business so the client representative team from our company who hunts businesses so they get this inquiry then they forward it to us as the event managers and we work on the proposal and the setup and the theme of it and then we propose it to the client so there is cultural events for example ramadan setup eid al adha setup you know eid al fitr setup so we provide decorations for ramadan you know we decor uh, the whole um, let's say the whole uh, area for a specific uh, time uh, from ramadan uh, till the end of ramadan uh, or a specific uh, lounge or something for example there is a small park and the client who owns that park wants to uh, decorate for the theme of Ramadan that whole park. Now that park can be, let's say, uh, 1,000 square feet or 2,000 square feet. So we provide like lighting system, uh, Ramadan theme, uh, fabricated items, uh, lanterns, uh, uh, you know, more of lighting themes, uh, flooring, uh, uh, then flower, then balloon giveaways for kids. Uh, and then catering, uh, like, you know, dates and Laban, uh, things like this. Uh, uh, we we, we, we um, rent the catering services and they provide the catering to the public free of cost for that period of time. And then when there is Eid uh, coming up, then we have Eid activations, whereas there are performers performing on Eid for kids free of cost, roaming around the area. For example, let's say you've seen the area City Walk. So uh, the, 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 the person who owns the uh, city walk area would be Imar, the, the property developer Imar. So Imar wants to decorate the whole city walk area with Ramadan theme and setup. So we decor the whole uh, city walk with lighting themes, with you know graphics, with branding. We brand the area, we brand the glasses of certain shops. We brand the flooring uh, with uh, certain floor stickers. Uh, we, uh, you know, uh, invite people to try out dates or, you know, things like this or small, small catering advices. We have some activations going on for kids uh, and for adults as well. So this is something. So, as I said, there are uh, different genres of events. If you're talking about big events, uh, there used to be big events in Saudi, but uh, now, I mean, sorry, in Dubai, but there's not much happening. Yeah, now, everything is happening the, in Saudi, so it was kind of everything weird. Everything is happening in Saudi, <laughs> exactly. The big money is there in Saudi. For example, you can say F1 was a big event for us. It was 1.2, uh, the revenue was 1.2 billion. Awesome. Uh, uh, so we did pretty much everything from the road build, from the structure build, from the, you know, paddock buildings. We fabricated them, we built them. From the uh, overlay operations of it, the building the fence around it, the catering part of the, it, the VIP hospitality part of it, the badges, the accreditations, uh, the VAPs for the cars, the stickers, and uh, the traffic management. Uh, we, we, we tied up with, uh, you know, Saudi police for the complete traffic management for that period of time. So yeah, it was a, a six months event, uh, you could say. Then uh, you, uh, you worked is... on it six months, six months. Yeah. yeah okay. By the way, but, they... sorry to cut you off for what? How many suppliers did you have to contact and syn synchronize with in order for all this to work? 
especially the F1. It's not a small event. For the F1, uh, there were 360 suppliers. Mashallah. So each one doing its job. If I uh, mention you the list, the list is very long. There were suppliers for each niche, you know, like, for example, we went, we wanted a waste management company. So there was a waste management company. We had four waste management companies working on it because since the event and the area was pretty big, see the event was just three days. There is a practice day, there is a qualifying day, and there's the race day. F1 is usually three days event. But to make that three days successful, you do the work for six months earlier. You know, you start working on it, start preparing on it six months before, because when we did the first season of F1, it was very new for Saudi Arabia. It was the first F1 ever in Saudi Arabia. So the amount of work put on it was tremendous, was too much. We had hired 861 freelancers. You, know, you understand? So each one having its own uh, position, then each position having its own sub positions. For example, we had operations director. So under operations director, there were uh, nine operations manager. Under nine operations manager, each operation manager had two operation supervisors, you know? By the way, so, uh, what is operation manager? Sorry to cut you off. So operation manager, from the word itself, you can get to know the, he, he or she manages the operations part of it. You know, uh, what comes under operations is waste management, medical services, traffic management, um, uh, 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 let's say. So these are the main few things which comes under operations. Then there is the production director. Production. So production, what happens under production? So under production, uh, these are the elements which come in. Technical, so under technical, there's AVL, you know, audio, AVL. video, and light. Oh, okay, okay. Audio, video, and light. And then there is power, which is powering up the whole venue, uh, generators, which I discussed earlier. Then there is fencing, which is fencing the complete perimeter and, and uh, you know, covering the perimeter so there is no public access or indirect public access to the venue by illegal way. So, you know, there are, uh, you know, like ticketed uh, stands where public has to go through. So the fencing comes around under production. So there's the production department separately. There is the operation department separately. Also in production, there is complete branding of the event. We brand the complete event with stickers, with banners. We brand the complete road the fences around it so it looks beautiful in the eyes you know mm. so 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 these are the elements which come in part and um, uh, some events need just five days set up some events need like f1 need needed six to seven months for the first season then for the second season 2022 uh we just took three months so half of it why because because when you do something for the very first time uh, but it is a repeated event because we know F1 will keep coming now mm. in, in Saudi Arabia, in Jeddah. So the first time, why it took so much time? Because there was no track. Mm. So we had to build the track. So building the track, we had to call the supplier who usually builds all the F1 tracks from Italy. They came all the way from Italy. They took three months to build the track to make it on the level of perfection where the actual F1 you know, uh, cars can drive on it comfortably. So it took three months just to build the track. Then the rest of the three months it took to prepare the area. For example, uh, the complete structure of paddock building. We build, we build the paddock building from scratch in three months. What is paddock building? What's that exactly? Is that like where the people sit? Uh, no, no, that is called grandstand. Grandstand. The grandstands are the ones where people or the spectators sit. But a paddock building is the one, if you see an F1 car coming to a pit stop, doing a pit stop, like changing the tires. Yeah. So it's kind of where... under the seats where they work on mechanics and that type of thing? Yeah. No, no. That complete structure where the pit stop happens, it is the official building only for the race drivers, for the race team, and for the VVIP, people to roam around that area. No one is allowed. No spectators, no public guests are allowed. Only high-end profiles. His Highnesses, His Excellencies are allowed. Prince, Princess, you know, are allowed that. Uh, the teams and the team uh, principals, the team members, and the race car drivers itself. That It's called a paddock building. Paddock building. 
Yeah, paddock building because paddock is something where you uh, you know park. For example, the paddock for plane, it's a big uh, you know like a chamber where the plane parks. So mm. it can be called a paddock as well. Mm. Now, um, so 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 there is paddock building which has to be built. There is then there is then the grandstands which uh, have to be built. There are these seating arrangements where public sit on it around the track. Then, um, so so for now, in the second season, the track is already built. We don't need to build the track. So three months gone. The grandstands, the seating arrangement, are made with metal, like a permanent structure. Mm. So we don't need that as well. So we only need two months for preparations. What is that preparation? We have small, small tents, khayma, you know khayma? Mm. Small, small tents for catering, for laborers to take rest in that, for medical tents. So we build that. Then we have fencing, we fence, that takes also within the two months time. Then we have hospitality, uh, which come, uh, which also do, does the catering of the complete F1. So that is why when you do that thing second time, you just take two months. So it depends from events to events what needs to be done. For example, uh, if you're doing an opening and closing ceremony, opening and closing ceremony is just for one time. Uh, but the amount of work needed for uh, to do the opening and closing ceremony needs practice and time and rehearsals for at least one month. So this is what I can say. I was actually going to say, uh, for what, um, what is your process, uh, what is your thought process in every month? So month zero, when you actually got in, is that how it works? It like, is, is it like bidding for the F1? Yes. Exactly. So, 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 so what was yeah, your so, thought process from like month zero, month one, month two, month three, month four, until finally, uh, month, month six when you finally finished. So what was your total focus in each month? Or is that not how it works? Like the, it's not really time management. It's like task management. Is it? Is that right? Uh, basically, uh, I'll just give you a small uh, brief. Uh, the client servicing team first pitches for the project to achieve the project. Because without achieving the project, we cannot work on it. So once we get to know that we have got the project, and we are the confirmed uh, agency or the company to do the project. Uh, real quick, for what? Uh, how did you actually get it? Like, where did you go to get these type of bids? So we have the client servicing department. What is that? They are more of salespeople. Oh, okay. They are focused so, on outreach. Okay. Yes, yes. They are the one who gets the business. We are the ones. The event managers are the ones who executes the business or works on the pitch proposal uh, because the client servicing team or the client management team, or you can say the sales management team, sales. yeah, goes and gets the business. Once they get the business, they throw it on us. Mm. So the event manager uh, team or the event management team works on the proposal, the pre-planning, the task management as you were questioning, the complete planning phase for that particular event. For example, F1, as I said, the first F1, we planned it for two months in advance. So we were in our offices. We planned each and everything. We managed the time for each and everything. How much time is needed for what? How much time is needed to build this building? How much time is needed to build this truck where the F1 car goes? How much time is needed to manage the catering, the food for the VIPs and all that, how much time is needed to build the khaymas, the tent, you know, these things. So we make a schedule chart in Excel sheet, you know, mm. and then this schedule, we uh, distribute it to all the senior positions. And then they see the schedule and based on that schedule, what we prepared, they do their plannings. So this is how you can say, uh, you know, uh, we are almost planned because you can't plan just three days before um, an event. You need a proper planning because always remember, if your planning is good, if your pre-planning actually is good, then your event will go good. But if your pre-planning is not as good as how the event should be, then you will have problems in your event. You will have small, small issues in your event, which you didn't think of. So when you're doing the pre-planning of any event, you should be 
thinking a way ahead of the future. What could happen if I do this or this? You know, you should always be prepared for the calamities because that's where a professional or an experienced event manager is different from a new event manager. Hmm. I actually would, um, how can I say this? Like, what do you guys do in operation, like daily? What is from like month zero, month one, month two? What do you guys do on a weekly basis? So, so the operation uh, basically works on planning of uh, presentation. So the operation departments works on, like for example, the cleaning management, the cleaning and waste management. What they do is, they make dot plans in the presentation. They take a PDF layout of that area. For example, if I'm doing an event, uh, let's say in Coca-Cola Coca -Cola Arena, you've heard about it, right? Coca-Cola Arena. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an arena where the concerts happen and all these things. So I take the layout. Layout means the CAD layout, you know, the top layout from the venue manager of the Coca-Cola Arena. I ask him to share with me the layout or the CAD file to me in PDF format or whatever in open format. So that's the first so step. First step, yeah, to plan something. We get the PDF, we then analyze how many people can fit, how many cleaners are needed, how many fencing is needed. Based, you will get the complete hierarchy or the complete knowledge and idea from that layout itself. You don't need anything else. Yes, if you have questions, if you're not understanding the layout at some parts, like where's the exit? Because in the layout of Coca-Cola Arena, everything is mentioned. The engineer who did the layout before building the structure obviously mentioned where is the exits, where are the different kinds of exits, you know, where are the entrance points, where is the parking basically. So the operations team, what they do is, not the production, the operations team. So the operations team, what, what they do is they plan the cleaning management they do a dot plan they you know like dot uh, they put dots where the cleaners are needed so let's say uh, they need 15 cleaners at zone one first when you get the layout we divide the area into four zones or five zones or six zones so each zone is managed by a zone manager that zone manager has its own team he has its own team of cleaners. He has its own operations people. He has its own production people. He has his own power. Uh, he has his own catering division. So he doesn't need to disturb other zone managers or other zone people. He's a self-sufficient person who has everything in his hand and in his power. So we divide the area. After dividing the area, then we segregate the cleaners, for example. Then we distribute the dustbins in the layout itself how many dustbins are needed you know and all this then if the venue already has uh, bathrooms and toilets then we decide how many toilet cleaners do we need for example if the venue does not have toilets or bathrooms then we uh, distribute portable bathrooms like the cabins i was discussing before uh, the portable bathrooms they come on a crane and they get lifted and dropped down on an area. And they are self-sufficient, basically. They have a water tank built behind them. And there's a lot of operations going behind it. Like the, they call it in Arabic, the Majari truck mm. comes and empties the tank and goes. This is all behind the scenes. No one is seeing this thing. In the front of the scene, it's just the public going and using the washroom and coming and that's it. But behind the scenes, uh, the water truck is coming and filling the water the Majari truck is coming and collecting the whole Majari and all this stuff. So, uh, so what the what the operation team does is they do the cleaning management, they do the waste management, they do the uh, consumables of cleaning items, for example, dust bins, tissues, and all this. Apart from this, the the operations team also manages the traffic management, which is how many parkings are needed, and if the parkings are running short, they find out an area nearby they rent out that area for extra public parking if needed then they also manage the accreditation the badges the operations team so we design the badges for the event uh, uh, most of the time and then the operation team also does the 
uh, uh, does the um, uh, what was that? Does the cabins and no, sorry, does the um, uh, what, what was that? Does the yeah, does the manpower? So managing the manpower. Manpower means in Arabic they call it amal. Hmm. You know, so so they manage the labors and manpower. How much manpower is needed? You know, during the event or before the event and all this. So this is more of what operation does as a planning before the event comes up. Mm. Uh, operations morely uh, focuses and uh, becomes active during the event, then before the event. The person or the department in events who is more active before the event is production department. So the production department does the power planning. Before the event starts, we drop the generators from the crane. You know, we drop the bathrooms and the cabins, the uh, tents, uh, um, and uh, the uh, anything to be serviced or rental. For example, we drop all the fencing. We cover the area with fences. Then, also under production comes the branding department. We do the complete branding before the event starts. So the physical thing happening is always the production department, then the operations. Because operations cannot do its operations until the event starts. Oh, so for example, like if you're going to make an event for what you just put the things in and then you start planning. Is that correct? No, no, no. The operations does the planning. The production also does the planning. Both of the department do the planning, but the execution of production happens before the operations department. Hmm. For example, as I told you, the, we cover the fencing area you know, with the fences. So that happens before the event starts hmm. because fencing does not come under operations. Operations, when you say operations, the word operation itself is self-understanding. It is during an event the operation takes place or during something which is happening. For example, oh. you're, you're performing, uh, a doctor performs an operation live, you know, at that time. When a, do a person does not need uh, a heart surgery, the doctor does not perform perform the operation for it no, only when I, it I kind of understand that yeah. Yeah. yeah only when he needs it so only when there is public around then the operation is in full force hmm. if there is public around then you need cleaners to be active cleaners are cleaning the area because public is around you need dustbins you need um, uh, cleaning of the bathrooms you know uh, then you need accreditation badges because the public is there you need to give them wristbands or you know badges because that's happening during the live anything live is something operations will do during the event but obviously coming down to your question like does the operations do the planning before the event yes they do it because they need to plan they come and sit with us during the planning phase when we are doing the planning we both do planning production and operations both do the planning before the event but it's only who is the person or who is the department who works before the event happening or the live days happening is the production department because we need to set that area we need to fabricate things which takes time for example we need to fabricate uh, let's say a information desk we need to fabricate you know it takes time like, what, what, what is an information desk Information desk is something for the public uh, where we place it at certain venues or certain areas where the public needs information or is lost. Uh, that where is this, where is that, where is the bathrooms. So there's a person or a promoter standing behind the information desk. So that complete information desk is what is fabricated by the, uh, uh, by the supplier. We give, them, we give the supplier the requirement. The, the supplier fabricates that item. Mm -hmm. So then... So the, all the fabrication items are fabricated for an event by the production team before the event is live because mm -hmm. we need info desks. We need entrance arch, you know, that entrance arch where people enter from. So that is fabricated as well. We need um, uh, fencing to be around. We need, uh, let's say, if an area where it needs carpeting, we do the carpeting. The production department takes the carpet, does the carpeting of it. For example, we need to brand the complete venue. So the branding takes part. Obviously, we can't brand in front of public, you know, someone on a ladder branding something. 
So the branding takes part before the uh, before the event happening. Mm. So operations is the one who will be active during live days, during when the public is around. So that's when operations is in full force. Production does its job, executes things, and then production chills. Mm. They which don't is, have to do anything. Which is you yeah. exactly, right? Yeah, oh. which is which is under an event, event manager. Mm. I'm just telling you the uh, specifics of under event manager. For me, I'm I'm a project manager, event project manager. That's my current designation. But under that, I have two departments which I play with. I have the operations department. So I'm just giving you in-depth analysis for your understanding. Mm. There is operations department. There is uh, production department. So the, these both are always there under the event management team. I actually wanted to ask you for what, um, and this is like primarily for helping the small businesses. For if a business wants to make a small event, you know, not not the, at the scale of F1 or the scale that you are experienced with, right? In in Blinks, um, what can they like? Who should they employ? Like, if two three people, who should they employ or freelancers to employ to actually make that event possible? Because you know they don't really have the confidence to, or not confidence, just the information that they know um, to actually make the event. So who should they employ? It's a very easy thing. So we are a very big agency. So we have in-house recruiters. Hmm. If a if let's suppose we never we we don't have recruiters, we give this job to the recruiters. We freelance this job to the recruiters, and recruiters recruit for us. For example, I told in F1, we recruited 800 staff. So all this 800 recruitment was done in-house, like by us, our agency, because we are a team of uh, 300 staff, uh, 300 staff employees working in Blink. So we have our own recruitment department which recruits people. So there are six people who keep, take the phone call and keep, you know, discussing. So what we do is, for example, your question is, how do I know that this person is fit for that role? No, no, no. if I actually had to employ one or two people, who should I employ? See, to do an event uh, based on the event scale, if it's a big scale event, let's say you said it's a product launch, right? Yeah, but, but you know what, let's just, um, you know, kind of uh, make it step by step. For example, uh, what's the smallest smallest type of, of event? It's workshop, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's a workshop. It's an activation, you can call it. Uh, it. As I said, it depends from event to event. For example, if you have a small, uh, opening ceremony or a small product launch. So you need, uh, you you just need uh, two or three people for a small product launch. Like you need an event manager and you need an event, you need two event coordinators working under that event manager who will do your complete event, which means sourcing, looking for suppliers, um, uh, looking for, yeah, looking for suppliers basically, because the suppliers, as I said, are the ones who will service for your event who will uh, do the servicing or provide the rentals for your business for example you have a small product launch uh, or a small opening ceremony uh, for, for, for let's say a perfume hmm. in a mall let's say uh, so you just need uh, two people that's it for a small perfume launch in a mall why two people because one will be managing uh, the complete overlook let's say that could be the project executive and then there could be a project coordinator the project executive will be like a project manager because you cannot call him project manager because the event is very small mm. it's a perfume launch at the end of the day in a mall so mm. the project executive would be a good term for it so the project executive what he'll do is the first thing to ask the mall the permission for that area he will go sort out permissions from the mall, permissions from the government if needed. Uh, Lease on with uh, certain uh, permissions. Once he gets all the permissions in the place, the second step is building or fabricating uh, the, uh, the uh, let's say you want a small backdrop, you know, mm. for the perfume and a small, like a plinth, 
where the perfume will be kept on top for people to try it out. So then the project executive will go and ask suppliers for cost. That how much will a three meter by two meter height backdrop cost me with branding in the front of for, that perfume? For, for like to, three days, right? Rental. Yeah, for that three days. It doesn't depend on three days because the fabrication team or uh, or the supplier will just charge you for fabricating that backdrop. Hmm. But concerning three days is what the mall permissions will charge you for. You need to ask, if you want it for three days, you need to ask the mall, uh, I need this area or this space for three days. They will give you three days rental cost. Okay, it's going to be 30000 to 20000 for this area. Yeah, that's that's the normal rates for... Uh, uh, there is no mall which will charge you less than 10000 mm. you know so you have to keep in mind this uh, costs this hidden costs uh, and these come by experience like if you worked in the malls or if you keep doing events you know about these costs you tell your client for example my client is gucci gucci is launching a new perfume so they give you the job to do it so when costing in the budget you need to be accounting in the budget when you give the price to Gucci as an event company that we will do your launch of your perfume. You need to make sure that you account each and every cost in it, like the permissions, the people you're hiring for this event, the uh, venue rental charges, the fabrication or the build cost of the setup of the theme the audio video and lighting if you need it for example if you need good audio or music to run around that space for people to be attracted that then you need branding which is if you need flags you know branded or if you need fences or if you need table or a welcome table uh, which will be branded in the front you know things like that. then you need to contact a fabrication supplier you need to add the cost for fabrication supplier in it and uh adding that cost to it so these are the things you need to be accounting when giving a cost a complete cost to gucci once gucci approves the cost you, then you put your 15 percent management fee fees or 20 percent management fees for yourself as the fees and the rest of the fees is all the suppliers fees the the supplier who's providing the backdrop the supplier who's providing the branding the supplier who's providing the music or the audio and if the client also wants some kind of entertainment like uh, you know like uh, jugglers or acrobats you know just mm. to attract the crowd so you put jugglers cost or acrobats cost as well you get a cost from the entertainment uh, agency so you put all of this in one cost you give the cost to gucci gucci then approves it then that's where the project manager starts now this project uh, manager or project executives does the pre-planning as well for your event. He does the cost and the budgeting as well. He then submits it, okay, to your client, let's say Gucci. Gucci approves it. Then you start running. You go ask permissions. You go ask for the dates for, like, for example, Gucci wants to have next month or 15th as the date for promoting this perfume. So you go to the mall. You keep asking that, is these dates free uh, for this for this spot, the mall says yes. So you're happy, and uh, you tell the client, "We have these dates for you, and we have the spot for you." If the mall says no, I don't have this date, but I have this date. So you go back to the client, or you go back to uh, Gucci, and tell them, uh, "Unfortunately, 15th of October is not available, but 20th of October is available." So the client says, "Okay, let's do it on 20th of October." That's sorted out. Then you start giving the concept. The project executive starts giving the concept to the fabrication supplier who fabricates the backdrop. What kind of design is it? What kind of branding is it? Do you need a table or not? All these fabrication items is given for fabrication. They do the fabrication in their warehouse, in their factory. They build the paint and everything, get them ready. During two days before the event or the launch, they bring the backdrop, do the setup inside the mall. And uh, that's where the part of project coordinator comes in. He's the one who does the coordination on ground. 
So you need an on-ground person. You need a project executive for pre-planning and all this cost, budget, an experienced person to do this small event. So yeah, I mean, uh, everything is done. Permissions are done. The perfume is launched. You have some entertainers entertaining the crowd. You gathered crowd and all this. So, but you become very clear to the client that you do not take care of, take care of marketing. Mm -hmm. Marketing is a different job altogether. Marketing is a different uh, section altogether. So we don't do the marketing part. There's a marketing division who does the marketing or the advertisement part, you know, because that's kind of headache. So we only take care of the event manager or the event team only takes care of the execution, the build, the planning, the operations and the production. But the marketing or advertisement is all done by the client himself, usually. So yeah, this is what it is. Well, for what um, is the statement of, you know, build it and they will come. Is this true when it comes to events too? Uh, as in what? For example, there's this movie quote where they say pretty much build, build it and they will come. And so I'm kind of referencing is, is that customers are going to come even if the marketing hasn't been done. See, you can't expect to build uh, a mall in the desert and you expect customers to come, you know, because no one knows there's a mall which is built in the desert. So for these kind of things, you need a little bit of marketing, a little bit of advertisement that, yes, there is a new mall built in the middle of the desert. It has these, these, these unique factors. So come and have a look. But if you're building your market or your agency or your, let's say, you want to open a laundry, you know, a laundry shop. If you build it in a deserted place where there's no public, obviously no one will come. So you need to do marketing for it. But if you build your laundry in a public spot where there's so much of footfall going around, you know, mm. uh, then you don't need marketing because it's all by eyes. The seat, that there is a laundry, a new laundry, they want to try it out. All you have to do is just put some posters outside your laundry glass that... I can uh, wash your kandura in, let's say, uh, usually it's, uh, let's say, eight bucks or 10 bucks, but I can do it in four bucks. This is an offer I'm giving you four dirhams in washing and ironing. I'm doing it in four dirhams. So you just put that label and people will come. So uh, the quote which says uh, you build it, they will come is only valid when you're building that specific thing in a public spot or in a prominent spot where people can see it. Like, for example, if you build a small kiosk, a food kiosk, or you place a food truck in City Walk, people will come. Because City Walk is a very famous area. There is public walking by, enjoying the view of City Walk. So if you build a small ice cream kiosk over there, people will come and try it out. But don't expect me... Uh, don't expect the public to come if you build a kiosk in the middle of a desert because there's no public first of all only camels so camels <laughs> would only come there and you know all this so so the point is you build it and they will come is only valid when you have built that specific thing in a good public area or in a good spot where there's good footfall if you build it in an unknown area you have to do a little bit of marketing for sure 100 percent <laughs> Well, um, for what, what type of uh, newsletter do you guys follow? Because I want to know, like, for a project manager, how do you track the changes in your industry? Um, we, we, I mean, for our, for the newsletter, let's say, to be honest, our newsletter is the client uh, brief. Ah, so the client pretty much, uh, it's really yeah. all the connections that you have guys made. Yeah. And so they pretty much just uh, do the whole uh, public release thing and it, it gets to you, right? Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. So the client is always the one, our clients, which we build through years of relationship, they pretty much are our newsletters. So hmm. if we do something good for the client, they recommend us to the other clients, hmm. you know? So that's how we became very well known in Saudi Arabia. We just did one event in Saudi Arabia five years before. And it was not, I would say, something good we did. But it is business at the end of the day. So we were the one to do the opening ceremony of a cinema in Jeddah. Wait, is that like the first cinema? First cinema, yeah. Oh, okay. 
so we did the haram part not the halal part <laughs> so but at the end of the day so so we got very well known uh, but we didn't build the cinema it mm. it is someone else who built it we just did the opening ceremony as an event agency we just did the opening ceremony we hyped it up uh, you know that's the part where we uh, you know sent marketing collaterals we did uh, campaigns for it uh, you know like two weeks campaign for it distributing um, uh you know brochures and things that there's a mall, there's a mall which is oh, sorry there's a cinema which is opening blah 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 i'm sure that the saudis couldn't believe it like yes yeah. it was very very uh shocking uh for some uh, old bedouins but it was very very um you know wonderful for the new youth they were very happy and you I'm, know, i actually kind of disagree i do think that a lot of people a lot of even old uh, people were like finally we have a cinema we don't need to go to qatar to actually just watch a movie Qatar or Bahrain you know uh, <laughs> in, in so 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 yeah uh, so so we built the first cinema I mean sorry we, we, we did the opening ceremony of for the first cinema and it was a big hype the opening ceremony went very successful and then that's how we started building our client relationship so we were the first agency basically you could say to bring up something very exciting very new we we, we called international artists from uh, Greece from Georgia to perform some acrobats outside the cinema uh, you know like the vox cinema we did the opening of the vox cinema out there so uh we leased on with al futem who uh majid al futem nice. who's the uh, owner of uh, vox cinema so so yeah i mean uh, it, it was a big event it was a big success and from that day onwards alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, blink experience got so much of repeated events from that particular event now if you name it we have very well known and uh, government clients like mos which is ministry of sports then ministry of culture then ministry of tourism uh then uh, we have smc saudi motorsport company where f1 is there dakar rally i don't know if you've heard about it dakar rally is there dakar rally, rally. It's, it's, it's a, a rally. rally it's a rally it's a rally but it's a mix rally it's the international mix rally where there's trucks cars bikes mm. you know touring around the saudi arabia so uh so we've got good connections with good sporting you know sporting agencies and alhamdulillah we are very happy and i could see that we are stable enough for the next five years in in, in the market you think that so, you would go global right like you, you are we, we do international events we were part of the fifa world cup for qatar we built the saudi fan zone the complete saudi fan zone in qatar fifa club uh, fifa world cup hmm. so we also do in events in london uh, we do in london the nickelodeon kids choice award <laughs> so we do the red bull air show in hungary so you pretty much hit like the 0.1 percent for what like you're literally the, in the top of the top in the uh, in the events management uh, yeah yeah in this so team. we used to when i used to start my career with other agencies i was doing events worth let's say 50,000 dirhams maximum 100,000 dirhams but due to time and experience uh mashallah right now i lead projects worth 100 to 500 million reals you know worth of uh, projects yeah. so alhamdulillah this I'm, I'm very happy with what i have i had a very much last question and it was gonna be for the small event managers who are pretty much in instagram you know uh, who who are profitable but you know they're still stuck in the 50,000 to the 100,000 there's a lot of them um how would you you know let them get exposed like in just one minute how what do you what type of advice you would give them for them to get exposed and pretty much go international to go international always remember in the start if you ha open your as i said before if you open your own company you need good clients good contacts you need good capital money if mm. you do not have good capital money lying down in your bank and obviously the startups won't have it for example if you or me i cannot open an events agency expect millions of revenue within one month or two months because i don't have the capital money i cannot pitch for events or government events 
because I can't pay the suppliers that money. For example, if I have a big opening ceremony for one of the biggest uh, brands, I have to pay the suppliers to do my event. So paying the suppliers itself would cost around 600 to 700 complete package. Mm. So I don't have that kind of money. So this is the first thing. If an event person needs to explore opportunities and go deep and learn more and handle revenues worth of 100 million, then my advice would be joining a multinational company or an events company like ours, like mine, like 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 Blink Experience, or there are others as well. Uh, that's when the person learns how he or she can grow from doing a 50,000 business of mindset to a 100,000 or, or, or 500,000 or 1 million kind of a mindset. What are the things involved uh, in planning a worth of a 1 million or 2 million or 5 million, you know, kind of an event? This is where the person learns. If you are a startup company, you will not reach that 1 million or 2 million, not even in one or two years. You need at least seven or eight years to reach that 2 million or 3 million, uh, you know, profit cap. If you're lucky enough, if you've got that kind of clients, if your clients are all birthday birthday party events, and uh, these people, they will or photo shoots for weddings, they will never give you, you know, one million. Have you ever heard of a photographer earning one million? No, you will never be profitable. No way, yeah. no. Yeah. So you need to step up, and work for someone who is doing for five million, who is who's who's earning five million. That's when you learn. From oh, that person, or let, from let's that qu let, let's question. What do they? What should they be? Quali what are the qualifications for them to work before you? In Blink, I mean, like, who do you, so who Blink, do you guys accept? Uh, so in Blink, being a multinational events company, we hire interns as well. We, but we, if if it's a big position, for example, if I'm hiring a, a project manager, let's say. I would expect the project manager to at least have eight or 10 years of experience in events okay. and handling different types of events. This is our requirement because we are on that level. Yeah. If there's a small events company who does uh, 1 million events maximum, then they would hire a project manager only with four years experience or with three years experience. But what, what are Be the expect expect uh, exception for what? What is for the example, exception? Uh, for the small events company who's earning 1 million per year or 2 million per year, which is a very small amount, uh, they would uh, uh, they would earn, uh, sorry, they would expect the project manager. Also, I, uh, I would like to mention this. Even the salary for that project manager who is working for a 1 million or 2 million revenue company per year is way lower than a project manager who's getting hired with the eight years experience his salary would be a big difference, you know, in this uh, field. So, uh, so, 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 yeah, this is what I could say, and uh, this is pretty much it. So, for so for a an aspiring event manager who's who only has like one year worth of experience, cannot work for Blinks. But what is the exception? What is the exception? Like, no, what should they prove? Blink. He can work for Blink but not in the position of a manager. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah but... because <laughs> our managers uh, are very trained managers. Our managers are only managers in the office, but when they go on site, they're given the position of head of zones, hmm. senior zone manager, you know, handling big, big zones. Because in offices, we are just given a designation, the managers. It's, our, it's, it's, an, it's, it's a designation which is mentioned in our visas. But when we go on field, uh, for example, I'm an event project manager as per my designation, as per my visa contract mm -hmm. in the company. But when I was in F1 in Saudi Arabia, my position was head of zones. Mm. It, I had a team of uh, you know, like at least 86 people working and reporting to me directly. Mm. So it's a big post. Uh, so an event manager with one year of experience cannot be an event manager or cannot be called an event manager in our company. He can start with event executive hmm. and we would train him. We would, uh, and if he does, and we are a fast paced company, 
the good part about this multinational uh, companies, they're very fast paced. So the person starting from a small uh, role or designation can grow very fast. Depends on his or her capabilities or adaptations of, uh, you know, adapting himself to be polished quickly and ready to take the effort on ready to work and roll his sleeves, you know, basically. Well, what's so, it, what is the one skill if if she had in her CV, you would immediately accept her? Um, I, I'll, if I, I'm someone, um, see, no CV of a one year per, one year experience person can entertain a project, uh, can entertain a recruiter. It depends on the personality and the effort she is ready to take. And uh, if I were someone, I would hire a person in my company or in Blink who's continuously part of uh, a management. For example, that person has worked at least more than two years in three companies. Ooh. So I can say that she is someone who's consistent in her work. Not that in one year she's changed six jobs <laughs> so or four jobs just for the salary. So it will definitely come in my mind, okay, this person is just working for the salary and he, he or she does not want to grow. If I see a person at least completing one and a half years in a company, then joining the next company and completing again one and a half years, it's understandable. And, and that's what I would see in a CV. And I would uh, take the person.